I usually take one and a half scoop or two scoops. I literally want to bash my head on a tub of protein every time someone tells me they take just one scoop of protein. How's it going guys? My name is Richie Kerwin and today we're going to take a look at some of the supplements taken by the My Protein Ambassador Goose My god. I can already tell that I have butchered her name, but we'll wait to hear how she pronounces it herself. Now, one thing to point out before we get into this is that just because she takes these supplements doesn't mean that you need to, or should yourself. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to my video. My name is Husha and I'm... Husha? Does this mean that, um, Gouda is pronounced Huda? If you're Dutch and you know, let us know in the comments, please. I'm going to tell you something about my daily supplement intake. I started using my protein when I was 14 years old and that's when I started with fitness. I really like the taste of the products. And so this may seem like a throwaway comment, but it's actually a really important point. When it comes to building new habits and improving your nutrition, it's so important that you enjoy the foods and supplements that you're eating. I would never recommend that a client eat a food that they disliked because I know that long-term, they just wouldn't continue to eat it. Remember, the best diet for you is the one that you can stick to long-term. So taste is damn important. You don't win any points for eating food that you hate. So let's start with the beginning of my day. When I wake up, which is around 7.30. I just wanna say here that I'm so glad that she didn't say 4 a.m. You hear so many fit pros talking about all they've achieved before 6 a.m. and that just makes me feel lazy. I usually start with a big glass of water and I take in my vitamins, which is the multivitamins and the omega-3. The gummies taste really, really good and the omega-3s are really good for your heart, for your brain. I take three of them per day. They are quite big and I would not bite on them because that is disgusting. For anyone who hasn't taken a fish oil before, please, like seriously, for your own good, don't bite or chew on fish oil capsules. Nobody wants a mouthful of fish flavored oil. So we know from population studies where we look at what a population eats and how it affects their health, that people who eat more oily fish tend to have a number of health benefits, including better brain function, heart health, and maybe even better muscle size and function as they age. Here's the thing though, Huja made a very important point about the dose of fish oil. Most people buy them and automatically just pop one and assume that's enough. Either read the instructions on the label or read the nutritional info on the label and look at how much EPA and DHA is in each capsule. These are the specific long chain fatty acids that give fish oil their benefits. Ideally, a healthy person would aim for between 1000 and 2000 milligrams of combined EPA and DHA per day. Depending on the specific supplement you use, that could be quite a few non-chewable capsules. I've done a whole video all about omega-3s and fish oils that's worth checking out if you wanna know more. Okay, I just wanna mention this too. She's taking these supplements with breakfast. And as a general rule, I think that's a really good idea for most supplements. Take them with food. Not only is your digestion better when you actually eat food, you know, because you actually need to digest things. But there are certain supplements like zinc or iron that can cause people to have an upset stomach if taken on an empty tummy. It doesn't happen to all supplements, but like I said, it's a good rule of thumb. I usually get a smoothie two or three hours later, a protein smoothie, and I'd like to use the clear way for that in a lot of flavors because they are all so good. But this is my favorite one, the watermelon flavor. Um, so it is such a game changer because it doesn't taste like a milkshake kind of protein shake. It is more like juice and I really like that about it. So I really like to take in a be clear way as a protein source. So she mentions having another protein shake or smoothie about two or three hours after breakfast. And this is a good policy if you want to improve muscle recovery and growth. Eating a decent amount of protein, say 20 to 30 grams of whey, stimulates muscle protein synthesis or MPS. But you can't just eat protein all the time to keep MPS switched on all the time. We know that after we stimulate MPS, we have to wait a certain amount of time before we can stimulate it again with more protein. This is called the refractory period and it lasts 
about three hours or so. And that's why it's a good idea to space protein out by at least three hours to get the most from your protein. Now, the evil geniuses, I, I mean, scientists at my protein labs were good enough to leave me in on a few secrets about their clear way. It's basically whey protein that has been processed and filtered to provide a protein which is much more pure than a regular protein shake so that it dissolves so well in water, it's almost like juice. It also has virtually the same amino acid profile of whey protein, so you should have the same benefits for MPS. It's not better than a regular whey protein, it's equivalent, but it's nice if you want a change from a regular milky protein shake. I usually take one and a half scoop or two scoops. One scoop is 20 grams of protein and I'd like to use one and a half or two because it will be a bit higher. Good product, really like it. This is another really important point. I literally want to bash my head on a tub of protein every time someone tells me they take just one scoop of protein. How big is that scoop? How many grams of protein does it contain? Is it enough for your body size? These are all things worth considering. In general, if you want to improve muscle recovery and growth, you want to maximally stimulate MPS. And a good way to do this is with between 0.3 and 0.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So for someone who weighs 70 kilograms, that's between 21 and 28 grams of protein as a minimum. And depending on the specific protein you use, the actual weight of protein powder you use would be more. Figure out how much you need and how much is in a scoop. In the afternoon, I always like to eat some quark with, is it quark? I still don't know how to say that. It's so confusing. So I, I, I call it bigger low fat yogurt with more protein. How do you call that? I feel a bit better about messing her name up at the start. But I really don't like the taste of it. I only like it with flavor drops. It's just great. It, I usually take about 10 drops, like small drops, into my quark. Um, it, or is it curd? I don't know. Anyway, I like it. I have it in the flavors vanilla, mango, white chocolate, banana. Those are my favorites. Okay, so I actually use products like this a lot myself for the same reasons as Huja mentions. I'm not a massive fan of natural yogurt and unflavored yogurts or quark or cottage cheese, but they're all really high in protein and calcium and other micronutrients like iodine and phosphorus, as well as being really low in calories. So I'd like to include them in my diet. Products like this are basically concentrated flavoring and sweeteners, and they go really, really well with natural dairy products and smoothies. They make food taste better without any calories. And if you remember what I said at the start, you want the food you eat to be tasty and enjoyable, otherwise you won't want to eat it. I do have one complaint about these products though. My protein doesn't have a passion fruit flavor and you need one, please. Pretty please, passion fruit drops on top. I'll wait for you to develop them, <clears throat> please. Actually, let us know in the comments what flavors you'd like my protein to start selling. So you guys, that's it for now. I hope you liked it and see you soon. So this has been Hooja's supplement routine. What did you think? Do you use any of these products yourself? Let us know in the comments, and if you have any questions about these, ask us in the comment section below as well. And remember, like and subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.